Hey y'all, next thing I'm gonna be building is for the lifeguard stands at the pool up at the high school. And these lifeguard stands are held up by a, a structural pedestal that's a piece of, it's a piece of three inch pipe with plates welded top and bottom. And they're on a bit of an angle because they want the base plate of the pedestal to be back away from the water, back away from the pool a little ways. But they want the lifeguard's platform to be out over the water as much as possible. That makes, makes it so that this structural pedestal that holds up that lifeguard's platform, it's on a bit of an angle. Uh, I can get an image of one and, and show you that. So the structural steel part, uh, the part that actually holds the weight of the lifeguard's platform, uh, it connects to the concrete, comes up on that angle, and then it's uh, through bolted. Uh, there's bolts that go through the lifeguard's chair. Um, they go through the lifeguard's chair, the base plate of the lifeguard's chair, then they go through the lifeguard's platform, and then underneath of the lifeguard's platform, they bolt to this structural steel piece that we're going to be building. Now, the ones that are up at the high school now have been there about 40 years. Um, and they're just corroded. They've just rusted away. You know, time's taking its toll on them. So the athletic director at the high school got a hold of me, and we went up and we measured... And I've got measurements to uh, build new ones, and they need three of them. So uh, I'm going to be building three of these. Uh, I'm going to be building three of these columns. And the plate at the top and the plate at the bottom are different. So I'm going to have three plates made one way, three plates made the other, and then I'll have three pieces of pipe to cut on on, on the angle, and those will all be the same but the first thing i want to do is i want to give you an idea of when i went up to the pool how i measured what i measured now there's a bunch of ways to measure an angle you can do it with measurements you can do it with a framing square some guys like to use degrees and degree squares there's just there's lots of ways to do it and i don't do it the same way every time it just depends on the situation but to give you an idea of of how i I measured uh, what I measured when I went to the high school and measured the job. Um, I'll just get a piece of pipe, whatever here, and 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 see what I can see if I can show you what I did when I went up at the high school and measured it. So when I went up to measure this uh, this pedestal for the lifeguard stand, pretty much looks like this. Got a base plate down here that's bolted to the concrete. There's a three inch pipe that goes up on an angle and then there's a plate welded on top of there. Uh, and, and that's where your lifeguard's platform would set on top of. Well, the first thing I did was once I found out what I needed as far as what size pipe, I took a measurement from the bottom at the concrete up to the bottom of the lifeguard's platform. So I know my rise and elevation was 52 and a half inches. And on a side note, when I measured that, when I actually got 52 and five eighths, uh, I decided to go ahead with a half because I would rather be a little less. If this needed an extra plate or something to shim it up, that would be easier to do than to make this shorter if it was too long. So if I had to error on the side of caution with that dimension i'd go an eighth less not an eighth more uh, so another thing i had to figure out when i was there is what those base plates are going to look like now this top base plate the whole pattern of it is pretty critical because it has to match the whole pattern that's in the uh the base of the lifeguard's chair this one down here the way it the way i determined that was I actually made this bolt pattern where we're bolting to the concrete for the base. I made it a little bit bigger than the plate that's there. Because what we'd like to do, um, 
we would like to abandon and cover up where the old rusty plate was bolted to the concrete for the last 40 years. Uh, if we move these, make this hole pattern bigger and move these bolts out, you know, we'll be covering up and abandon uh, those bolt holes in the concrete that have been used for so long. I don't think it's a good idea to try to reuse that. Uh, they can drill new holes in the concrete and, and they'll get a better, a better connection that way. So the next thing that we need to know is something to tell us how this angle is going to work. And the way I decided to do it was to just measure the offset. So if you just imagine this, this scrap piece of pipe that I'm putting up there is the, is the pedestal that we need to make. So there'd be a base plate down here, and there's a plate right there, and those plates would be level while the pipe is on an angle. And the way I went about measuring what angle I was going to need, I took a plumb bob, I took a plumb bob like this, and I set my tape measure where my tape measure is in the center of the base back here. And then up here at my 52 and a half inches where my plate was, I put my, my string in the center of the pipe. And then I plumb bobbed and measured uh, straight down from the center line up here to get me a, an offset measurement. And the tape measure, you know, would tell me from the center line of that to the center line right here, what would the difference be in 52 and a half inches? So that's how I, that's how I came up with this 12 and a half inch offset, which I think would be, you know, with something this small, it's going to be something pretty easy to lay out on the table. And that'll be an easy way for us to, to make these uh, on the right angle and also make the elevation correct at our 52 and a half inches. So the next thing we're going to have to, first thing I'm going to do uh, and figure out how to do is how I'm going to make all these holes. Now, I don't think it's worth the time to drill all these holes. If you had an iron worker, uh, you know, to punch these holes or, or a hydraulic punch of some kind, you know, that'd be nice. I'm probably not ever going to get nothing like that. I, uh, I can make these extremely efficient by burning the holes, but to make them accurate, if I'm going to burn them, what I want to do is I want to make me a couple of jigs. So I got a piece of scrap metal out here, and it's nice to have some stuff like this around. I don't need a brand new piece of steel to uh, make a couple plate jigs. So I'm going to make a couple uh, burning jigs out of this scrap plate and I'll show you how I use those to make the holes I need. Sounds like Zoe's back there raising hell with the gas man. Zoe, hush! Hey, Chato Popsky! All right then. I got some plates laid out. These are the plates that I'm planning on using these plates as the, well, they'd be a burnout pattern for the four holes. So I have one that's 10 by 10 with an eight inch square hole pattern. I've got one that's six by six with a four and five sixteenths square four hole pattern. And the way I'm gonna burn these holes with a hand torch using these plates as a jig uh, you may have seen the way I've done it before where I have a hole that I set my torch tip down in. I'll blow a hole through the piece of steel that I'm cutting the hole in. I follow over to with my torch tip against the hole in my jig and then I just follow the jig around. Well, the one important thing to know about using that method is you're, you're going to come out burning a hole that's about a quarter of an inch smaller than the hole in your jig. Uh, 
these holes right here, I'd like to have them maybe 9 sixteenths, 5 eighths, 11 sixteenths. Uh, 11 sixteenths would probably not be too big. Uh, and this is a scenario where it would be okay to be a little big because structurally the bigger hole is not going to have an effect on what this, what this does. Uh, once the bolts are tight, you know, slacking the holes irrelevant. So I'll probably go to the bigger. And that makes me want to make a jig with holes that are 15 sixteenths. That, having holes in my jig that are 15 sixteenths should cause me to end up with holes in my plates that are about 11 sixteenths. And I think that'd be good. So let's take a look at the plates. So I got a 10 by 10 with an 8 by 8 four hole pattern, a 6 by 6 with a 4 and 5 16 hole pattern. I've got my hole center punched and I'm going to mag drill with the 15 16 annular cutter. And another thing I've done that's important is on my cut lines, I've also put a center punch here, here couple here there there so what those other center punch marks are for is during the drilling I may erase this soapstone and you know I'll need to be able to get that mark back easy and if I got a couple center punch marks here then I can just go from center punch mark to center punch mark and fix that line if I if I happen to erase it so let's get these drilled So here's what we got happening now. We got the Miss Princess Diane. She's out here enjoying the sunshine with her little squinty eyes like she likes to do in the sunny afternoon times. Got our patterns drilled. See right here, this is the small one. You can see where I've drilled a hole in it. That's to hold it in the pattern torch. I've got the bigger one in the pattern torch right now. So we're getting ready to uh, we're getting ready to burn our squares, burn our plates on their outside diameter. We'll do that step right now. Once that part's done, then we'll get the pattern set up to hand burn the holes. This is my setup to, to burn these holes in my plates. That These are the 10 inch ones, these are the bigger ones. And what I've got here, obviously I've taken my pattern plate that we made and done some modifications to it. One thing is, when you if, you, if you're gonna burn holes using another plate as a guide like this, it can't be setting right down on the plate that you're burning. Uh, if this, if I was trying to use this as a guide and it was sitting right down on the plate that I was trying to cut the hole in, one thing that would happen is all the heat would come back to my torch tip, uh, since it can't leak out here, uh, you'd actually get more heat coming back than going in and it just doesn't work to, uh, to, to be able to heat the steel up and cut it because you got too much heat coming back, blowing right back into your tip. Uh, another thing is just you need this space to get your torch tip in the right position to follow around that hole. 
this is going to sort of look like this. So, you know, between your, your torch tip and your steel, you're going to need that much space. Another thing is you see there's a tab here and a tab here. So I can push this out, you know, when I push this that direction to where I've made contact here and here, that's kind of going to stop it uh, to, to help line it up. And then right here, I've got this one clamp on it, and that should be good enough to hold everything in place and i've got this on the corner of the table where i can blow through here without blowing into the table and i got a jack stand over here to support this end so we're ready to try this one thing that this uh turned out to be kind of unfortunate about the plate that i used is this daggone plate had that little hole in it right there right where i had to make part of my jig so i'm just gonna have to deal with that i'm i'm not gonna do anything about it other than when i cut that hole i'm gonna try not to make too much of a messed up spot right there but uh let's take a look i'll take this apart and give you a look at it also So we're ready to cut and what I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use a number one tip. I do 99.9% .9 of my cutting with two different tip sizes. I either use a triple odd or number one. I've got a lot of other torch tips. I very rarely use them. Uh, this is half inch I'm going to be cutting and I can cut half inch with a triple odd. The biggest reason that I would insist on having the number one for this job is because on every one of these, I have to blow a hole. You know, I have to heat this half inch and blow through it. Now, if you were trying to do that with a triple lot where you can't start from an edge and go, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take you extra time because the triple lot just doesn't have the heat to heat up that thick plate and get, get a hole blown through it. So, uh, let's, let's cut some holes and see how this works. There's our three big plates. Got our whole burnifications done on it. Before we go cleaning that up and, and, uh, and grinding it up and everything though, we, I'm gonna go ahead and do the little ones. And you can see I've, I've got the jig done pretty much exactly the same way, just smaller. So let's get that doozin done. Got my plates cleaned up and obviously the next thing is figuring out that offset like we got we've got a 12 and a half inch offset on the center line in 52 and a half inches of elevation so I made me a line Went 52 and a half inches, 52 and a half inches, and up there I made me another line. I made a uh, line that was 90 degrees. And then from that 90 degree line, I went the 12 and a half inches, and then I made me a line that shows my offset angle of my pipe. 
And then of course I've got to allow half inch for the plate at the bottom and a half inch for the plate at the top. And I can take a measurement of how long my pipe would be on that center line. And I got my measurement was 52 and 11 sixteenths on it. And I also got to figure out how to cut my pipe on the angle. So I used my bevel square and I got my angle set off my layout. Take my bevel square over to my chop saw. Set the angle of my blade by moving my fence. And after I did that, I saw a piece of flat bar scrap flat bar was just uh, laying there on the saw table so I went ahead and I put it in the saw and cut it uh, that just give me something to look at you know to test and see see if that if that's gonna work and it looks like it is so we're gonna figure out next we're gonna figure out uh, we're gonna mark the pipe and cut it 52 and 11 sixteenths That's my cut length on my center line of my pipe I'm using my center head again and what I've done is I've got marks. I've put a mark here Went 52 and 11 sixteenths put a mark 52 and 11 sixteenths again put a mark 52 and 11 sixteenths again put a mark. That's for my three pieces I've taken my center head and I put it on my marks and got it level and made me a center punch mark which would be the exact top dead center of this pipe on each of these marks and that's how I'm going to proceed with cutting it and so what I'm going to be doing uh, I'm going to be cutting down the center of that center punch mark line and I am aware that these parts are going to come out a little short because of the width I'm removing because of the blade. I'm not really worried about that. In some cases, you really need to pay attention to the width of your blade because uh, it will take out an eighth of an inch. But this taking a sixteenth off of each side of these and maybe making this pipe an eighth of an inch short, is that's not a concern of mine right now. Uh, and, and I, these are something that I wouldn't mind was a little shorter as opposed to a little longer because we we'd be better off uh, if we had to add a shim to the top plate underneath the platform than if we ended up too high and had to cut these down. That would be undesirable. So uh, next thing is going to be sawing these uh, three pipes and another thing that could be done on this is you could probably put your center head up here and get your um, get your your pipe just perfectly top dead center when you saw it i'm probably not gonna do that i'm probably gonna look from the side right here and and just put my center punch mark where i think it's about top dead center and and cut it that way and I think for this, that will be fine. Probably see now what I'm talking about, how I didn't mind if this was a little bit short. Uh, have a quite a gap here and the way I put this first one together um, I clamped this plate down on the table when I held this pipe up there I put me a mark at the the absolute long point and lined that up with uh, a, a line I'd made in the center of this plate and I just put a tack right here and when I put the tack right here I leaned this pipe away from me so I'd have quite a gap and then I pretty much put a plate up on top and lined it up and did the same thing but the tack was completely on the other side so I had tacks at the long point then the next thing I've done uh, I used wedges like this 
uh, to, to get the gap right on the other side. And while I was doing that, I was using a level on this plate and on that plate up there to make sure that they were parallel. I was using the level to, to you know, while that was level, that was level and same thing the other direction. So this one's tacked up and I pulled the wedges out and I think now I can use it as a jig to put the other ones together. I don't know. I'm going to see what that's like. The other part of this I was measuring is that elevation at 52 and a half. And I can do that by measuring from the table. Just put my tape measure on the table and then measure to the plate right here. And then um, one thing I'm not checking right now is the offset. So it could be a little bit off. You know, the, the elevation is probably the most critical. But I'll get the plumb bob and we'll just see. So with my top plate and bottom plates leveled up and getting my string pretty much in the center line here uh we can get a look at the offset um plumb bob's moving around there i'll try to let it down to settle it out but there we go looks like the offset's about just over 12 I was shooting for 12 and a half that's gonna be fine I think it's gonna be good so I'll see about putting these other two together so I lined them up and uh, tacked them up and now I'm ready to weld them uh, I'm just gonna run one pass with the MIG and be good to go This is a hole reamer uh, you can put in a drill. This one's half inch shank fits in this cordless drill. On burned holes like this, when you burn a hole with a torch, it's nice to have a reamer. Uh, you know, yeah, have a little place where there's a bird. And you can clean it up a little bit. It'll knock down the high spots and make your hole a little better. If you, uh, if you don't, do this enough or, or need to really uh, justify purchasing a reamer like that you can do this kind of with an old drill bit <laughs> you know that old drill bit that you've sharpened so many times you just can't do nothing with it uh, you can jam it in a hole and wall her out a little bit and, and get rid of some of your some of your bad spots in your holes these holes I think are uh, you know, I have did them a little bit big, so I'm not too worried about having a problem and, and it's not going to be a problem that, that they're big, you know, having slack because, uh, in this application, the, once the bolts tight, it, the, the slack in the hole, as far as its diameter, isn't going to make a big difference, but you can see this is, this is a hole that has been burned with a torch and then. I ran that reamer around it and you know it almost looks drilled and it was an efficient way for me to do it so I'm gonna go ahead and and ream these and another thing I did uh, you know I had a lot of weld spatter uh, from my MIG on these plates and I ran this diamond wheel on there and that uh, that diamond grinding wheel the flat wheel got those spatter balls off real handy so we'll finish reaming these out and i'll probably wire brush around the edge and this is this is pretty much it for this uh pretty simple thing i'm not going to be cleaning it up too much more i'm not involved in the painting on this but uh that's it so y'all have a good one thanks for watching